Well, you, you know what I don't get here? We keep talking about the Constitution being clear on some part, in some part, and in another breath, we don't seem to get the clarity of uh, the Constitution. Uh, because, Mark, I'm going back to Marco's question, asking that uh, if it's so crystal clear that the word appoints is there in the Constitution, shouldn't we have allowed it to go if we have any cause for a review, then we can go ahead and review that section of the Constitution. But as it stands now, the governor has the powers constitutionally to appoint a CJ. I'm afraid the governor does not have powers to appoint the CJ. If the governor has powers to appoint the CJ, there will be no need for such list to be sent to the NJC. He doesn't have the powers. So can it we starts with him. Would, it sh starts with the should we, should, we, should we then see some kind of contradiction in the Constitution? Well, if you want to call it, if you want to call it uh, uh, misunderstanding or yes. probably or confusion, yes, you might say that. But for, for, for those, if you look at the Constitution even clearly and closely, you will find out that there is no, there is no ambiguity whatsoever. We had an interview with the governor, and he also states that... Uh, well, uh, they gave reasons, and some of the reasons also has to do with uh, some form of interest so within the NJC and uh, Justice Okocha uh, having uh, a relative of hers in the NJC, and they're not comfortable with it. And if they're not comfortable with that particular appointment, don't you think they also have a right to protest against such move by the NJC? Well, um uh, between you and I, I, I must say to you that uh, I would not like to go to delve into all those political issues as it concerns. No, I, I, know, I know you're looking at the legal aspect, yes. but we, we mustn't also fail to listen to what the, the governor has said. The, One of the reasons the state is saying, well, <clears throat> constitutionally speaking, that the constitution tells him to appoint, and perhaps maybe the list is just to the NJC for ratification, and it's just not a name sent. The relation, the relation of the uh, NJC that is on the National Judicial Council is eminently qualified to be there. OCG Okucha was a former uh, president of NDA. Uh, Wale Olani is also on the NJC. He's also a former president of the NBA. They are eminently qualified to be on the NJC. They are not there because uh, and I'm sure OCG Okucha has been there for up to five years now since he was president of NBA. And um, he did not, uh, he wasn't put there, as it were, by the powers that be, by the NJC, because of this matter. In fact, he probably never knew that this issue of his uh, sister or whatever, I don't know, relation, becoming this chief judge of uh, River State, he never knew that such a thing will come up. And uh, if, I, if, I, if I read... Uh, what I see very well, I do not think OCG Okucha has any hand in the, in, the, uh, in the appointment, if you like, of the chief judge of River State. Because there are 25 members there, and I'm sure uh, if OCG Okucha even wanted to put uh, a relation there, uh, it will be, his uh, voice will be drowned by the voice of the 24 other members of the NJC. Well, you, you can't say for sure how influential he is within the ranks of the NJC. And so, I mean, you cannot totally say that you're sure that there is no bias in that particular recommendation, can you? Yes, um, I cannot say that because, I mean, I'm not... Uh, you're not a uh, member of the NJC. I'm not a member of the NJC and I don't have any facts to that effect. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying is that OCG Okocha, being on the board, uh, sorry, being on the NJC, on the council... Um, He's been, he's there because he's eminently qualified to be there. Mm -hmm. He's been there for years now. I'm sure, I think OCG Okocha was the president of NBA before Wale Olani Bekum, and that should be up to can, six, can seven years now. Can I ask you a question? Now. You yeah. are a lawyer. Yes. If you were in court and you found out that your, uh, the judge is a relative to the person who is accused, would you say that that person might not be biased against, you know, a side in that particular case? Um, like I said to you, yeah, that is a different kettle of fish, if you ask me. Um, being a judge, the other person will raise the, the, the possibility, the likelihood of bias. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, to that extent, if that is raised, I mean, a lot, whole lot of authorities, the proper thing for the judge to do is to uh, step down and say, no, I can't take this matter. And uh, 
it will send it back to the CJ or wherever for it to be reassigned to another judge. So do you think that the River State government in this particular instance is right in some way when they think that there must have been or there could have been some bias on the part of the NJC? That is why, that, that's where I'm going. I'm saying to you that when OCG Okocha was made a member of the NJC, I'm sure you and I, and in fact OCG Okocha, never knew the sister or whatever the relation. Don't let me use it because I don't know really their yes. relationship. You never knew she was going to be uh, up for uh, the, the... Which we agree with you. So I think I do not agree. That's why I said to you that the, uh, the OCJ is just one person out of 25 eminently qualified people. I'm talking of the Chief Justice of the, of the Federation. I'm talking of Justice of the Supreme Court, Court of Appeal, members of the NBA, former presidents of NBA. Even I think Dowdy was also there up to recently. How do you think, uh, in yes. closing, how do you think this can be resolved? Because uh, constitutionally speaking, the governor has the pass to appoint. So how can this be resolved? I'm sorry the governor does not have powers to appoint. The governor has powers to announce. No, but you have to go the with the, the words of the Constitution. If you, you read the Constitution, points. you will see what I'm saying. The, you want me to read the words he pointed out to you. You want me to read the you Constitution. You said very clearly, sorry to interrupt you, that the Constitution used the words appoint. Are we correct on that? Appoint on, if you read the words of the Constitution, if you read it in conjunction with Part 3, I mean, Schedule 3 to the Constitution, you find out that the governor does not have power to appoint. You said we have the, to read it in the, conjunction, the, but he asked that question based on the words that are in one part of the Constitution. That's the point I'm making, if you listen to me clearly. The, the NJS, the, the State Judicial Service Commission, brings up a list if it were possible for the governor to just appoint the chief judge of the state, the governor, there would be no need for referral to the NJC. When you refer to the NJC, the NJC now recommends out of the list, this is the person. The go what the governor just needs to do is to just pick that person and put the, the person there. The president has powers to appoint his ministers, but they still go through screening. No, the they, they, there's still provision for screening by the House of Assembly. My point when that is, goes back, listen well, now, listen now. When that goes back, there's still provision for screening by the members of the House of Assembly. No, there's still provision. That what? is the law. If you read further down section 271, read section 158, because and section 20, subsection, subsection 1, sub C, of the Constitution of the, of the Third Schedule, you will find out that what the governor does is to actually announce. The, the Constitution might even have created this problem. Once the NJC picks somebody, the governor just says they have picked the person and he puts him there. Okay. That's what to do. So, so I, hey, a legal practitioner, I would like to thank you so very much for coming on the program. Thank you very much for inviting me. We'll take another moment here, and when we return, another perspective on this matter. Stay with us.